Welcome to video 13 in my rotational motion series. Today we'll solve a great problem using the moment of inertia tensor. You'll see how the tensor changes with coordinate location and how to compute the moment of inertia about any axis. This video builds on concepts from video 12 where I introduce the moment of inertia tensor and its key ideas. To begin, I just want to read the problem that we're going to be solving today. A thin uniform square plate of mass m and side length l lies in the xy plane. Consider two placements of the coordinate origin. In case one, the origin of the coordinate system is placed at the center of the plate. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. In this problem, we're going to discuss the inertia tensor using two different coordinate systems. In case two, we're going to use a coordinate system where the origin is at the lower left corner of the plate. This is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And so what the question asks us to do is for each origin placement, do the following. Compute the inertia tensor in matrix form, find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the tensor, determine the principal axes and principal moments of inertia. And then part B, consider a line in the xy plane that makes a 30 degree angle with the x-axis. Calculate the moment of inertia about this line for both origin placements. On this slide, we calculate the moment of inertia tensor for the plate in the center of mass coordinate system. This is the moment of inertia tensor. The diagonal entries are the principal moments of inertia, showing how mass is distributed about the x, y, and z axes of the chosen coordinate system. The off-diagonal elements, called products of inertia, indicate asymmetries and are zero when the object has reflection symmetry about the coordinate planes. This is the general moment of inertia tensor for any object. What I'm labeling ICM is the moment of inertia tensor for this plate for this specified coordinate system. I xx is the integral of y squared plus z squared dm. We can set z equals to zero because its thickness is much smaller than its width. Ixy is zero. That's computed down here. The integrals can be computed and this is the moment of inertia tensor. In this case, with this coordinate system, the tensor is diagonal, meaning all off diagonal terms are zero. This tells us the coordinate system is aligned with the principal axes and is placed at the center of mass where the object exhibits full reflection symmetry. This matrix is diagonal, so we already know the eigenvectors are the standard canonical basis, one, zero, zero, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. So this coordinate system represents the principal axes for this plate. The principal axes of the moment of inertia tensor are special directions determined by the object's mass distribution. They reflect the symmetry of the mass about the center of mass. Notice the eigenvector Vx and Vy have the same eigenvalue. There's a degeneracy. 1 over 12 appears twice. That's not surprising. If you rotated the plate by 90 degrees around the z-axis, the geometry would remain unchanged. Because these two eigenvalues are degenerate, any linear combination of their corresponding eigenvectors is also an eigenvector. So any axis in the x Y plane is the principal axis for this object. Now I'm going to calculate the moment of inertia tensor for the same plate, but now I'm going to use a different coordinate system where the origin is at the lower left corner. The moment of inertia tensor is here. This moment of inertia tensor that I'm calling I sub corner corresponds to the moment of inertia tensor for this plate using this coordinate system. Most of the matrix element integrals are computed here. Again, we're in the YZ plane, so we can set Z equal to zero. IXX equals the integral as Y goes from zero to L and x goes from zero to L of y squared dm, where dm is mass density, dx dy, and you get one third ml squared. That's where the one third comes from. As you can tell, this moment of inertia tensor is different than the tensor where we use the coordinate center at the center of mass. The inertia tensor here is not diagonal, which tells us the object is not symmetrically aligned with the coordinate axes. To find the principal axes, we need to compute the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the tensor. Diagonalizing a matrix is something that's done all the time in physics. If you don't know this procedure, it's really not that hard. I recommend you look into it. We solve the characteristic equation to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In this case, one eigenvalue is 112 ml squared with the corresponding eigenvector 110. Eigenvalue lambda 2 is 7 twelfths ml squared with the eigenvector negative 110. And eigenvalue 3 is 2 thirds ml squared the eigenvector 0, 0, 1. This is the direction of eigenvector V2, negative 1 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction. This is eigenvector V1, and eigenvector V3 is unchanged. The axis along V2 divides the square into two symmetric halves, which is why it's a principal axis. You'll notice the other directions don't create this kind of symmetry, unless the origin is placed at the center of mass. That's one of the main reasons why it's more natural and useful to put the coordinate origin at the center of mass. At the center of mass, motion is purely rotational and aligns with internal symmetry. When using an origin off the center of mass, even clean rotations, can lead to translation or precession, making the motion harder to interpret. And the final part of this question, part B, asks us, consider a line in the xy plane that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the x-axis. 
Compute the moment of inertia about this line for both origin placements. Here's a line that makes a 30 degree angle with this x-axis. The question asks us to compute the moment of inertia of this plate about each one of these lines. To find the moment of inertia about any axis, even a tilted one, we use a unit vector pointing in the direction of that axis. This is a unit vector that points off at a 30 degree angle with the x-axis. First, we multiply the inertia tensor with the unit vector. Remember, i times omega is equal to angular momentum. This gives us a new vector, showing how the angular momentum would behave if the object were spinning in that direction. Then we take the inner product with the same unit vector, which tells us how much of the angular momentum actually lines up with that axis. We do this simple calculation for the i center of mass matrix, and the I corner matrix. And we find these two values are the moment of inertia. The axis going through the corner has a larger moment of inertia, and that's reasonable because the mass is more spread out from this axis than it is from this axis. Here are a few takeaway thoughts from this problem. The inertia tensor changes with coordinate origin. Only at the center of mass does it reflect pure shape symmetry. At the center of mass, symmetry and dynamics often match. So principal axes align with symmetry axes. Away from the center of mass, the tensor includes additional terms, and principal axes no longer reflect geometric symmetry. They are found by solving for eigenvector. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. H. AcePhysics.org Math and Physics Tutoring with Dr. Hudis.